Hi, there's been a lot of discussion online recently regarding artificial intelligence. So I thought I'd have a bit of fun and do an experiment. I asked artificial intelligence chat GPT to give me a script for a video on what Amberlin was really like. So here's that script. Welcome to this video where we will explore the life of Anne Boleyn, one of the most controversial and intriguing figures in English history. Anne Boleyn is often depicted as a scheming, ruthless woman who manipulated King Henry VIII into marrying her and ultimately led to her own downfall. However, there is much more to Anne Boleyn than what is commonly portrayed in popular culture. So let's delve into what Anne Boleyn was really like. Anne Boleyn was born in 1501 in England. She was the daughter of Thomas Boleyn, an ambitious courtier, and Elizabeth Howard, a member of a prominent noble family. Anne grew up in the royal court where she received an excellent education and was fluent in French and Latin. She was also known for her beauty and charm, which caught the attention of King Henry VIII. Contrary to popular belief, Anne Boleyn did not initially set out to marry the king. In fact, she resisted his advances for several years before eventually agreeing to become his mistress. Anne was a devout Christian and had a strong sense of morality which made her hesitant to engage in a relationship with a married man. However, King Henry VIII was determined to make Anne his wife and eventually broke away from the Catholic Church to divorce his first wife, Catherine of Aragon, and marry Anne. As Queen, Anne Boleyn was a patron of the arts and literature. She was well-read and had a keen interest in intellectual pursuits. She also used her position to advocate for religious reform and supported the Protestant Reformation, which was gaining momentum in Europe at the time. However, Anne's religious views were not universally popular and she faced opposition from powerful figures in the church and at court. Anne Boleyn was also known for her strong personality and independent spirit. She was not content to simply be a decorative figurehead as Queen and actively participated in politics, influencing the King's decisions and appointments. Anne was also fiercely protective of her daughter Elizabeth and was a loving and devoted mother. Unfortunately, Anne's reign as Queen was short-lived. She was accused of adultery, incest and treason and was ultimately executed in 1536. However, there is little evidence to support those accusations and many historians believe that Anne was the victim of a political conspiracy. Anne Boleyn's death was a tragedy and she remains a fascinating and enigmatic figure in English history. So what was Anne Boleyn really like? She was a complex and multifaceted individual with a strong sense of morality, intelligence and independent spirit. She was not the ruthless and manipulative figure that is often portrayed in popular culture. Anne Boleyn's legacy continues to inspire and captivate people today, and her story serves as a reminder of the dangers of political intrigue and persecution. And that's what ChatGPT gave me. I was very impressed with that. It gave me an introduction, main body and conclusion and was generally accurate. Although I'd point out that Anne Boleyn actually spent her formative years on the continent, first at Margaret of Austria's court and then serving Queen Claude. Also, she didn't actually ever agree to be Henry VIII's mistress, only his wife. Also, Henry VIII didn't break away from the Catholic Church. He broke away from the authority of Rome. The problem that I have with that script is that I have no clue where any of that information came from. When I do one of my normal videos, I incorporate quotes from primary sources. I mention historians and sources I've used. And when questioned by you in comments, I can share my sources. 
For example, if I wrote my own video on this very question, I'd share quotes from the likes of William Latimer, who wrote a treatise on Anne Boleyn, and who knew her personally. He was her chaplain, and she trusted him to go abroad to collect evangelical books that were deemed heretical at the time. He would have known her well. I'd also share descriptions by ambassadors and other contemporary sources. It's important, I feel, to tell you what I'm basing my opinions on, and for those opinions to be rooted in the historical sources. But ChatGPT doesn't give any references, and it's also not giving any credit to the writers of blog posts, etc., that it's getting the information from. And it won't tell you where it got the information from. I've seen Facebook adverts from people teaching other people how to use AI to publish ebooks, and I find that worrying and rather sad. AI definitely has its uses. It's great for giving you a catchy title for a blog post or video, but I think it could well lead to lazy people skipping the research part and just ripping off other people's work. What do you think? I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Oh, and by the way, Tim has used AI to make the thumbnail for this video too. See you soon. Bye-bye.